What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have some Detroit Lions news. The big news has went down, so let's get it started. You no, know, I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, you guys saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. You know what this video is all about. You know what's going down in this video. Kenny Galladay has signed to a four-year $72 million deal with a max of $76 million with the New York Giants. Basically about $18 million a year. Wow. Kenny Galladay got paid today by the New York Giants and uh, he will no longer be a Detroit Lion, which means this entire wall is former Lions. What? What is happening, guys? This offseason is crazy. But Galladay is no longer with Detroit. And you know what? For me, you know, I'm not going to get sad. I was mentally, pre I was emotionally prepared for this to happen. You know, I was anticipating this to happen. As much as I didn't want it to happen, I, I love me some Kenny Galladay. I, I was prepared for something like this to happen. And this goes back to last season. We go back to last season where the New York Giants reach out to the Detroit Lions during the year and show interest in bringing in Kenny Galladay. Now, we don't know what they called about. We don't know if they asked if he's going to be a free agent or for a trade. I'm not sure. But either way, the Lions were in a situation where they were trying to win games, right? They were trading for Everson Griffin. They were trying to win football games to save their jobs. Fortunately for them, that didn't work. But Kenny Galladay was not going to be traded. And then that brings us to this offseason. And we're saying to ourselves, man, it's going to be tough to bring back Kenny Galladay. You know, we're going to have to backload this probably. It might be a little difficult to bring him back and Romeo Okwara. We could try, but it's going to be really tough with how the, the salary cap is sitting. The league set it at $182.5 million, which wasn't a lot. So some teams were in some salary cap issues. You had to make tough decisions like this. The franchise tag for Kenny Galladay was looking around, you know, 16 to $18 million, which is, of course, a lot of money. It's, it's closer to $16 million, I think, was the franchise tag. I don't remember the exact him out but it was a lot of money to tag him for one season Joy Lions decided not to take Kenny Galladay so we're wondering okay is he going to get an extension well he did not get an extension Romeo Cuaro was paid roughly 13 million dollars a year we'll see how that sets out but I think the max is 13 million dollars a year so he got paid and at that point once the Lions brought in Terrell Williams now even though it was only three million for this for this season and then they bring in Brashad Perriman it seemed like, okay, the Detroit Lions may be preparing to move on from Kenny Galladay. And, and you know what? This does hurt. Of course, you know, we have this shirt. This was, I think, I think this is a shirt. I can't remember when I got this shirt. But uh, that's a shirt that I've had for a little while. You know, Dose of Dad wears it a lot. But I remember when this guy was drafted and I was hype. I mean, I was just like, dude, this guy's wow. I mean, I wanted Corey Davis during the draft. And we got this guy named Kenny Galladay. I remember this. I was at one of my sister's softball games. I was like, okay, Kenny G. I didn't, I didn't follow the draft like that. I wasn't doing YouTube then. But I just remember watching him against the Arizona Cardinals, saying to myself, man, this guy's going to be the Lions' best receiver in no time. He will be the best receiver. I, I, just can, I can remember saying that so well in the car ride. Kenny Galladay is going to be the best Lions receiver very soon. He's going to be our number one guy after seeing him just explode against the Cardinals to start the season. Now, Marvin Jones Jr. was still here. The Red Lions brought in Marvin Jones Jr. to kind of be, you know, the other outside receiver. But Kenny and Marvin was just such an amazing duo to watch. And it does hurt me, you know, to see this. I mean, Kenny Galladay is putting up ridiculous numbers. I see people saying, oh, he's overpaid. Look, Kenny Galladay, you know, he's not going to be the fastest guy. He's not going to get the most separation. You know, he's not going to do that. But what Kenny does... He does at a level better than many receivers in the NFL. He is one of the best jump ball, go up and get it deep threats that you're going to find in the league. At six foot four, 214 pounds, this dude is just a nightmare. You know, he, he can stretch the heck out of a defense. He did, he put up some crazy numbers. When you look at this guy's numbers and you compare them to the games that he's played and the games that Calvin has played, he's only a few hundred yards short of what Calvin was putting up. Now, sure, Calvin didn't, you know, have Matthew Stafford the first year. You know, there were some different situations there. And of course, you know, with Stafford, he was just pushing the ball down to feel like crazy. But. It was a beautiful pairing between a guy like Matthew Stafford, who was a gunslinger that wanted to push the ball down the field, and a guy like Galladay. You almost wish that this guy could have been there when Calvin was there, or this guy could have been there, you know, really early in Stafford's career when he was just talking everything, right? But Daryl Bevel brought it back. You know, he brought back the push the ball down the field, the play action, take shots. And man, the Galladay, Matthew Stafford, Marvin Jones, that trio was amazing. Not only did we lose Kevin, Kenny Galladay this offseason to a huge contract to the Giants, we also lost... Marvin Jones Jr. and Jamal Agnew, but also Marvin Jones Jr. and Matthew Stafford. It's it's clearly, it's truly a new era for the Detroit Lions. And it, it's sad. He was a beast. I mean, you're talking about 2019. This guy played with a backup quarterback for half the season, and yet he put up 1,190 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns. Imagine, you know, he was on pace to put up even bigger numbers than that when Stafford was healthy. So he was doing this with backups, with third strings, because there was also a third string quarterback that he played with, David Blau, Jeff Driscoll, right? He wasn't even doing this with the top guys, and he was doing this without having a great running game. 
but that's what he is. He's a throw up, go up and get it type of guy that's going to win so many of those jump balls. And it was honestly, it was the closest thing to Calvin that we've seen since Calvin. It was baby Tron. That's, that's what he is, right? I mean, he was little Megatron and his numbers reflected that. And honestly, I know he's only been here for four seasons. I know last year he missed time with an injury in his rookie year. You know, even his rookie year, he shined 477 yards and he didn't, you know, play that much. He only played 11 games, only started five. But, you know, as soon as he came in, you just knew that the pairing was going to be beautiful between him and Stafford. And it was just an incredible outside threat. The Detroit Lions should get a comp pick in return for 2022, hopefully a third and a third round pick, which will set us up really nice for 2022 draft. And for the Lions financially, you know, they just... You know, you got you to gotta pick where you want to spend your money. The Lions just didn't have the money. Kenny Gallagher reportedly really declined $18 million a year from the past regime. Maybe he accepts that if it's this new one, but I don't know. Maybe the new regime just doesn't value the receiver position like that. Maybe he didn't like the past regime and he didn't want to sign that contract, but now we're in a situation where we just couldn't get him back. Regardless, I'm happy for him. He got a, he got a gigantic deal. You know, I think that's amazing for him. He wanted to go get paid. I can't blame him. You know, he's coming off his rookie contract. He is already 27 years old. So he's coming off of, you know, playing really, really well, putting up great numbers and he wanted to go get paid heard that he's no longer a lion but uh i i hey you know what as long as he's not in the nfc north going against us and hey, as long as he's happy and he got his money you know that, that's that's what i'm truly you know matters in this situation i didn't want him being with the bears you know i was mostly prepared for him to leave just don't go to chicago you know don't go to green bay don't do something crazy like that all right go play with daniel jones go match up with saquon barkley and a, a young group over there with Jason Garrett is their offense coordinator and see what you guys can do. But yeah, I mean, no, I clearly, I would love to have him back. Uh, but I was, like I said, I was prepared for him. It's not because financially we just weren't in a great situation to do that. He already declined a big deal. I don't think it was necessarily that he didn't want to be a lion because he told us he wanted to be a lion before the Matthew Stafford trade. That was before the new hiring. So that could have something to do with it as well. Maybe they did work out. Maybe they tried to work a deal and he didn't accept. I don't know. I don't know all the background. Maybe we'll figure that down the road. It, it just didn't seem like he disliked the lions, you know, because he was putting up things in case y'all forgot. Like it seemed like he liked the lions. But for the Detroit Lions, you know, at the time when he's offered contract, didn't really seem like he wanted to play with that staff. And at this point, the Lions just financially, there were decisions that he had to make. And Galladay, you know what? I understand it. Not wanting to take less money. If he didn't want to take less money to play here, I get it. I wish he would have, of course. You know, but he would probably take a significant cut to probably play here. And the Detroit Lions said, hey, you know what? We're not going to spend $18 million a season on Galladay. You know, we, we love to keep you, but $18 million, I mean, that's... That's a ton of money. That is a ton of money for the Lions were financially. And it was just tough to see that happening. So they prioritized other things. You know, they basically had two receivers for $6 million that aren't Galladay level. And they brought back Romeo as well. Romeo was like a big, big deal as well. So, you know, good luck to Kenny Galladay. It's tough to see. Kenny G. Kenny G, man. Kenny G. Good luck, man. Go out there and do your thing. Speculate all we want. Did he want here? Did he not want to be here? Would the Lions offer a contract? Did they offer a contract? Did they not want to pay a receiver? You know, we could do all that, but I think ultimately, you know, we'll find that out down the road, right? Probably. You know, he's gone, right? So he's gone. He signed elsewhere. And I think I'll just leave it like this. Thank you, Kenny Galladay, for all the amazing moments and memories. Kenny G, we won't forget Kenny G. I mean, that's the kind of impact that you left. You know, to have a guy that only played for four seasons, he was injured. His last season, that tells you the kind of impact that you really had on this team. So thank you, Kenny Galladay. Lions should get a third round comp pick for 2022 for Galladay because of how much that he got paid this offseason. Lions and free agency aren't going to pay a guy that much money to replace that position. The comp picks are like very strange. It's like, oh, did you replace the guy that you lost? You know, things like that. It's kind of the NFL's decision on it, but they should get a third round comp pick, which is as high as it can get at the end of the third round for him. It, you know, it's not the best because we look at him and we know how much he gave, but he was a third round pick himself. The odds of us sitting on another Galladay are very, very slim, but don't count out the third round picks, right? We know how impactful those guys can be. However, Galladay, man, you're one of a kind. You were Bob Quinn's best draft pick. You were one of our best draft picks of all time. And there's a reason you got paid so much. Teams see value, you know, teams see value when they pay. They understand why they're paying the money. You know, we saw that in the past and we see that here with you, Galladay. There's a reason the Giants gave him $18 million a year. They believe you're worth it. Miles Killebrew has signed to a one-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know what he's getting paid this year. You know, we'll find the contract details out a little bit later. I definitely would have thought Killebrew would have been some of the lines we would target to bring back. Uh, Killebrew, you know, was one of those safety slash linebacker hybrids we kind of, you know, were moving around. He was really nice on special teams. You know, that, that's where he really thrived because he was a very big hitter. He could absolutely set the tone. Really never found a consistent role defensively. I don't know if a scheme change would have, you know, made that better for him. It just comes down on how much money he was actually going to get paid this season. I don't know what the Steelers gave him. I would have loved to have Miles Killebrew back. Miles Killebrew, you can't have a better name than Killebrew for a guy that hits hard. I remember when he came out of the draft and it was like Miles Killebrew highlights. 
hard hitter Miles Killebrew. Like, oh my gosh, that's the best name ever. Killebrew? Like, that sounds mean, right? It sounds kind of like a beer thing, too. But it sounds mean. Like, I'm Killebrew. And it's like, okay, calm down, Miles. That dude could hit. So, Miles Killebrew, that's a tough loss. That is a big tough loss for Central Teams. We'll see what the Detroit Lions do to, uh, you know, fill those positions out he did add a little bit of safety depth but he mainly was a special teams guy you know could play linebacker but again he wasn't showing that much on defense it was mainly the special teams that he added to the team so we'll see the lions do to try to replace that you know if they try to go lay at someone that they have connections with we'll see i know josh hill has played a lot of special teams you know the the saints tight end we brought in so okay, there you go we'll see though but miles brew miles killer brew man good luck you know, do your thing in Pittsburgh. Hopefully, you find a role in defense. Maybe you can get a little bit more involved defensively. I think that'd be really cool for you. So, hopefully, that does happen. And uh, we know what you're going to do on special teams. We know we know you're going to kill a brew on special teams. So, yes, sir, man. But, uh, no, seriously, this one's tough, too, man. A couple of tough losses, man. Offseason is tough, man. I mean, you add some players and it's happy. And the next minute, it's sad. What the, what the heck, man? Offseason is bipolar. Thank you, bro, for watching. And I'm out.